Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends. Thanks for joining me as always. I thought it would be very, very appropriate for episode 53 on the channel to cover uh, what is probably my single favorite vintage baseball card set, which is 1953 Tops. So I'll keep the backstory brief, but uh, I was a kid collector in the uh, early 90s. The first baseball card set I ever collected was 1990 Tops. And so as a result, I was pretty enamored with the original um, Tops Archives 1953 reprint set that was produced, I think, in 1991 um, when I was sort of uh, just really immersing myself in collecting as a kid. You know, I didn't have a single original 1953 Tops card when I was, you know, an eight-year-old and first got a, a look at those reprints. But I knew right away that they were something very, very special. And being able to buy packs of those reprints and collect those reprints and, and read the backs and appreciate the artwork really gave me a, a love for the 1953 top set that has continued to this day. So when I returned to collecting as an adult, one of the goals that I set for myself, that's a, a long time, you know, lifetime goal really, is to try to complete a 1953 Topps baseball set. Um, it's not an easy task. It, you know, there's something like 274 cards on the, the checklist, so it's somewhat of a tall order, and obviously they're not that easy to find, and, you know, you won't find a 1953 Topps card in a dime box or anything like that. But it's not an impossible challenge either, uh, with less than 300 cards, and, you know, sure, there are some big uh, names in the set, no doubt about it, but there aren't um, too many, like, huge rookie cards or, you know, hugely expensive cards that just make this an impossibility for me. And again, like I said, I'm not in a rush to get this done. So that's the backstory of, of uh, how I began to first appreciate 1953 Tops. And I thought for today's video, I don't want this to be too lengthy. We might just take a look at like 20 of the cards from my slowly growing set pursuit. And so I just grabbed uh, 20, a stack of 20 here out of my uh, vintage box. And we'll take a look at them. So I'm sure you're all probably familiar with this iconic design by this point, but... Uh, they feature really great portrait paintings, and they are oversized compared to uh, standard modern cards. So uh, I have this uh, card here sitting alongside me from a, a video I shot uh, that's coming up soon. And you can see this is a standard card. And if I line this up with the bottom edges, you know, this 53 tops card is quite a bit bigger than a modern card. Um, same size that they used in the 54, 55, and 56 sets, I'm pretty sure. Um, and again, this is just all about the original artwork and paintings. I just think that they're beautiful cards. Um, they really look like small museum pieces when you have them in hand. And as you can see on the back of Luke Easter here, the backs are just so well done as well. Uh, one of the most clear and legible card numbering schemes in uh, the history of Topps baseball cards very easy on the eyes, especially for those of us that are getting older to do the sorting on this set. And just a clean layout that reads nicely, doesn't feel crammed, but fits a ton of information on the, the card back. So I think with, with this set, everybody knows about the card fronts and they, and they are rightfully uh, appreciated in the hobby. But I think the backs are maybe underappreciated or sometimes get overlooked. So there's Luke Easter of the Indians. Um, basically, what I'm, my goal with this set is to get cards like the ones that you see here. I, I think I talked about this in an earlier video, but uh, I'm not looking to complete an entire PSA graded set or to have examples that you know are pack fresh or look incredibly mint. Uh, I really just want good visual appeal and cards that aren't a total train wreck with pinholes through them or corners missing or giant creases down the middle. Um, and so I've been surprised at how many in this type of condition that I've been able to pick up um, fairly cheap in, in raw um, raw shape over the years. So um, I've used a variety of sources from, you know, ComC to eBay to uh, the occasional card show. And I'm always on the lookout with my checklist to see if there's anything else I can add. Here's Bob Borkowski. Some nice uh, outfield advertising on the fence here in this picture. And of course, the, the flag and flagpole is kind of neat. I'm not going to show the back of every one of these. I think you get the point and you could go somewhere else if you want to look at those scans at this point. But we'll just quickly look through 
the rest of the stack that I pulled out for today. Clem Kosherek of the Pirates. Here's Sal Evers. Um, like this set because it actually came out when the Giants were still the New York Giants. So it's kind of neat to uh, have some cards in the collection from the period before they moved across to the West Coast. Here's uh, Connie Marrero. Nice smile there from Connie. So almost all the cards in this set, with some exceptions, are portrait shots like this. Um, there are a couple of cards that stray from that, but as you can see, the majority are very, very similar, uh, but just well done paintings. Uh, these, are, these are just classic in my mind. There's Peanuts Lowry. There's Billy Hitchcock. So he's got a unique background, which is the wooden fence there. Um, sort of fun to look at the different background choices that the artist went with to create these. And of course, you can't go wrong with the fantastic Philadelphia Athletics elephant logo. Here's uh, Ted Lepsio of my beloved Boston Red Sox. Um, obviously, within the overall set, I have a goal of completing a Red Sox you know, subset or a team set of all the Red Sox cards. And I think I'm most of the way there with the Red Sox. Um, Ted Williams is not in this release, as you may know, which makes uh, completing a Red Sox team set a whole lot easier. Here's a Mel Parnell, another Red Sox card here. Smiling Mel, I like that one. Another New York Giants card, this is Hank Thompson. Um, these are all in the earlier portion of the set. I just grabbed the, the first 20 cards out of my box here. There is a pretty tough high number series. Uh, cards 221 through 280 are very, very short printed and uh, tough to come by. You pay a premium for those last uh, 50 or so cards on the, the checklist. Um, so I do have a few of those, but everything we're looking at today is from the standard, you know, easier to acquire low number set. Here's a uh, Ewell Blackwell. Happy to have this one because as is the case with almost every vintage baseball set, you pay a Yankees tax on just about every New York Yankees player on the checklist, whether they were a significant player or not. Next up, Bob Kennedy, of the Indians, and of course the politically incorrect Chief Wahoo logo that we won't be seeing any longer. So this is a cool one, Johnny Groth. I uh, love this because uh, it is the St. Louis Browns. So um, don't get an opportunity to add a lot of St. Louis Browns cards to the collection, especially if you stick to the modern stuff. So this is pretty neat. And I really like the logo that the Browns used to use back in the day with this kind of weird alien kid, I guess is how I would describe it with pointy ears and some antennas sticking up there. So in the early days of my long-running sports card blog, I actually had a blog banner that was based on this logo from this set. It's another New York Giants here, Jim Hearn. Pretty cool. I like the no betting sign in the background there in the stands. Well, times have certainly changed on that front. Here's uh, Gus Cerniel. Cool one here. It looks, it looks almost like a treehouse behind him there in the background, and a few stray fans in the stands on a nice cloudy day. Here's uh, Grady Hatton with a water tower over his shoulder and some more stadium advertisements. Pretty neat one there. Johnny Clipstein of the Cubs, or Clipstein. And the last of the cards that I pulled for today's video is Bob Del Greco. The Pittsburgh Pirates. Gotta love that Pirates logo also. So um, yeah, that's really all for today. Uh, we'll keep this under 10 minutes in length, but like I said, for video number 53, I thought it was, uh, there was nothing I could think of that was more appropriate to touch on than the great 1953 top set, which again is my favorite vintage baseball set in the history of sports cards. So hope you enjoyed these. Uh, if you have any comments on 53 tops or if you collect these yourself, would certainly love to hear about it below, and I will be back soon with some more sports card content. Take care.